It is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Brather Show. We're in the Mothership Studio 22. Kyle Thompson back in the hot seat. Glad you're back. Two days in a row. You must like me. Are we friends? We are buddies. In fact, we're going to do this. We're going to tape this real quick. We're going to go find some barbecue. Let's do it. And we're going to gorge ourselves. We're going to eat meat like men. And we're not going to wash our hands. I don't think we should. I mean, that's what we have shirts for. And here's the thing. In Oklahoma, (laughs) they think they know barbecue because I'm an oaky through and through. But the further you get south in the Texas, the better the barbecue and the brisket gets. So I'm looking forward to it. So having, let's talk about barbecue for a minute because having grown up in the state of Georgia, Deep South barbecue, very different from Texas, right. Oklahoma barbecue, right? I didn't know brisket was a thing yeah. growing up, which sounds like a, a mortal sin to say around Texans these days. But we have pork barbecue. And I still to this day, I, I will say pulled pork barbecue to me is better than brisket. But that's oh. my sacrilege. Yeah, for it the is day. sacrilege. Around that's here. my sacrilege. And uh, I was, uh, but I mean, listen, I, again, you're, you're just flipping a coin because it's still all ridiculously good. Right. Right. It's just good. Uh, and I, when I started running for governor of the state, somebody said to me at the beginning of the campaign, they said, when you're done with this campaign, you're going to be sick of shaking hands. He said, you're going to have a five finger death grip and you're going to hate barbecue. And I can honestly say, and I just did an event last night and they served barbecue. I am not tired of barbecue. There's no way to get tired of barbecue, especially yeah. if it's good barbecue. Because whenever I was growing up, like most of the people I grew up around thought Chili's ribs, like those were the best <laughs> ribs you get. Like I'm not. I want my baby yeah, back. Yeah, like dude, I'm not even kidding. And so whenever I had like Kansas City yeah. ribs for the first time, when I had like South Texas beef ribs and you know brisket and all that for the first time, it completely changed everything. You can't get tired of it because yeah. there's so many different combinations. I love meat because of my gout. It doesn't always love me back. Thank God for good medication. It makes where I can eat more meat again. I'm a carnivore, 100%. So take that, PETA. Take that, PETA. I killed a Neil guy a couple of weeks ago, 600-pound Neil guy, which is big Indian deer is what it is. And uh, it's some of the most delicious meat. But I had them, uh, when they butchered it, I'm having them do the ribs. I mean, they're massive. Right. And uh, it's some of the most delicious meat on the planet. So what have you eaten off of it so far? You I got, haven't like, gotten it back oh, yet. Oh, you haven't gotten anything No, they're still processing so it. But the Neil guy, I mean, I've, you know, I make steaks out of it, the whole yeah. thing. I don't, I don't do the sausage and stuff. That's a waste of really good meat for that. Mm. Uh, that, it, that meat kind of absorbs whatever seasoning that you put on it in a way that no other meat does. It's ridiculous how it does that. So I'll have you back down. We're going to have a Neil Guy barbecue. And like most people, N-I-L-G-A-I, Neil Guy. Most people don't even know what that is. Yep. Um, there's no season on it because it's not indigenous to Texas, kind of like Axis deer. Yep. They were imported, so you can smoke them anytime you want. I mean, smoke them, then smoke them. Right, that's right. right. So uh, anyway, we'll, we'll do that. My buddy Matt Pittman with Meat Church Barbecue. Uh, Matt is a phenomenon because phenomenon because – you think of anybody else like people in the people who barbecue pitmasters and stuff they still will do things and mention matt Pittman and yep. meat church and the way he does things you you very rarely will see a chef give credit to another chef and what they're doing right but yeah. matt is a master on that i was talking to him the other day and we we're planning a little party out there he he invited me to the thing for memorial day out at his lake house and he said i think chad prather is going to show up and i was like i will but who's going to do the cooking right, right? And he's like, well, if I'm doing the sing, I'll do the singing, you do the cooking. I was like, we'll run everybody out of that party. That's right. Well, so. the, the thing is about that community is so I've got a good buddy from Kansas City. Uh, his name's Meet Mitch, so Mitch Benjamin. Yeah. And he released a book that had all of his recipes in it. So all the sauces, all the rubs, all the everything. Yeah. And I text him because he was going to come on my show, but I text him. I was like, dude, why, why did you do that? Yeah. And he was just like, he had this very open-handed view. He's like, the barbecue community is very open-handed. If you ask somebody, even if they're like a multi-time world champion, hey, how did you do that? I want to get mine to be a little bit more like this. I want my smoke green to be better, all that. All of them are down to help you. And yeah. so it's a good community thing. So that's what well, Matt goes over to the Whiskey Ranch in Fort Worth, which is where they do the TX whiskey and bourbon. And he puts on clinics and classes. Right. And I've had friends who say, you know, I want to go to that, but 
I don't want him to talk about like how to get my my charcoal hot or my wood hot. He's like, I want him to go more in depth. I said, Oh, he does. Right. And they're like, But does he share his secrets? I'm like, Yeah, because you still can't do it. Mm-hmm. Like, no, even if you know the barbecue secrets that those guys are doing, you're still not going to do it the way they do it. You know, maybe their grill or their smoker mm-hmm. smoked in a certain way, and they just know how to get their deal the way they like it. And you know, you kind of got grandma's touch on the sugar and whatever. Right. You're not going to do it. But it's a fine art, dude. It's yeah. a fine. They spend fine so art. much time. I mean, you're yeah. trying to do it to where you can get a good, you yeah. know, rack of ribs on the weekend. This is what these guys do for a living. So you shouldn't yeah. expect it to be the same, but it should be acceptable. Well, when we're done recording here, I'm we're going to go eat barbecue. Let's go. And uh, I'm ex- I'm excited about meat with you. I'm so fat. Okay, that we we don't have to talk directly about what you just said, but I will say I'm the type of guy that gets excited about meals weeks in advance. So whenever okay. we put this on the calendar. I'm with you. I was already excited We've been talking about, about eating this right. barbecue for a week. Because if you took me to like a, a salad place or some yeah. sort of vegan joint, like I, we probably yeah. just wouldn't this is back. This is like car- carnivorous sexting is what we've been doing for the last couple of weeks. I'm not going to confirm or deny whether it got to that level, yeah. but you know, it was fun for both of us. No homo. Yeah. No homo. Sort of trans, but whatever. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I'm I down with this flavor. I like where we're at. I like what we're thinking about. And probably in the next segment, we're going to pour. So let me, let me um, let's just do it right now. So... Kyle knows the way in my heart. I'm a tequila guy. He's a bourbon guy. And of course, historically, those of you who watch the show know that I'm all about the whiskeys. But the whiskey started hurting the gout. And, uh, and Kyle, of course, hosts a fantastic show that everybody needs to be subscribed to and watching and listening to. Or you know, li- can they watch it yet? Do you have the video? Or are you just doing audio? Yeah, well, only we have right audio now? and video. It's it's a lot bigger on the audio side. But yeah, Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. I mean, where else are you going to say something so misogynistic that it's a man's podcast? But I encourage women to listen to it as well. But he comes walking into the studio with a big old bottle of Casa Azul. And I want everyone to know that this is the way to my heart. You're welcome. Right here. This is the way to my heart. So our special, I can't even tell you how many famous people have taken a sip from the skulls here. And I actually went and washed them a little while ago. Because sometimes we just let the spirits do the washing. Now, I don't want to shoot this tequila. This is sip it. You know? I just want to sip it because it is so good. Cheers, my dear brother. Cheers to you, my friend. And uh, here's to the much success on your show. Let's get it. Mm. That is fantastic. Hits all the right notes. Breathe across it. Chew it. Breathe across it. That's like dessert. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's not something that you make your margaritas with. No. And it's not. I got a buddy of mine, Freddie, works in Fort Worth. He's he works at a restaurant and a bar in Fort Worth. He's making lamps out of these bottles, and I mean, they're beautiful lamps that he does. Yeah, and apparently, like every single one of the bottles is deal. unique. So, like, they're all like handmade. Yeah, they're all handmade, unique to hand that painted bottle, the so. whole thing, and and yeah, it's a beautiful bottle. But thank you for that, brother. You got it. And uh, and I just happened to have a bottle of Garrison Brothers that was given to me at an event last night while I was eating barbecue, and there I was like, go. "Here's some Garrison nice Brothers." Nice trade. Garrison Brothers. Is I, legit. I came in. I was just bringing it in. I was going to set it up here, but I, I'm, I'm like, "Here, man, I brought it just for you." That's right. Pay for it. When, how long have you been doing this podcast? I started in 2017. Okay, so you you got a, you got a few years under your belt. Yeah, we thing. just did episode uh, 300 a month ago or so. Why why men? Why why do men matter? So the thing about it is, in our modern culture, we don't want men to exist mm-hmm. unless it's the trans kind. That's kind of where we've gotten in Good our point. culture because if you're trans, that means that you can check off an intersectional box, right? But if you're a straight cisgendered Christian white male. Like, not only are you Satan, but also you're not of any use to anybody, right? Except for if you need to build something so that other people can take from it, right? Whether that be a business or a great family or, or something like that. So someone else can benefit from the things that you've done. But men are important because we were built to be important. Right. So as a complementarian, I believe that men and women are both equal in the eyes of God, but we've been given separate roles to glorify God and his kingdom, right? And so if men, you know, abdicate their responsibilities or if they reject their role as a man in society, there's a system that they've been put into that they are now, you know, causing an issue with. Like they're throwing sand inside of this system that's supposed to be working. Because every time you go into a family, you go into a household where there's a strong leader, man, a guy that's meek, not weak, but a guy that's meek that has a lot of strength, but it's bridled, that's under voluntary control. 
that woman isn't like under his thumb, like right. worried about whether or not he's going to say something or do anything. Those kids aren't like just worried about what dad's going to do. That is such a healthy family. It's because we were built to be that way in that unit to where everybody serves in the same way as we serve the father. And you use the phrase complementarian, which I like a lot, which yeah. is what you just described. Sure. Basically, you know, you compliment one each, each one another in that relationship. I've noticed that really strong men, like men who know who they are, they have a sense of history and identity and a sense of where they're going in life, purpose and passion. Real strong men. A lot of times their wives, they are some of the strongest women. Oh, Usually absolutely. it's always 100% absolutely. of the time. You come in there, like they're confident, they're outspoken, mm-hmm. they don't feel like they're cowering in the kitchen, you know, they're not afraid to speak. No, they're, they're and they know how to put that guy in his place real quick, Oh, it's quick, beautiful, too. Chad. Like, my wife, she is a lioness, brother. Like, yeah. she is such a gangster because I have a very dominating personality, very big, you know, kind of center of attention type yeah. of thing. She knows how to work within that because she's got a very big outgoing personality as well. But she loves me in such a way to where she knows when it's the right time to put me in my place, and she does so, and she's not scared to do... I mean, everyone's a little bit scared when you get into a dramatic scenario sure, sure, where, sure. you know, someone might be mad at you. But that's like our show is mainly male audience, but the 10, 15% of women that listen to our show... They are gangsters as well. They absolutely yeah. love what we're doing, and either they want their man to kind of echo some of the sentiments from the show, but or or they kind of you know have men like that and they listen to yeah. it together. But yeah, these aren't women that are intimidated by true masculinity. They're desperate for yeah. it. And you have all these women out there today that are single and they're desperate for you know quote unquote a good man, whatever that is, and yet they want that man to be subservient to them, mm-hmm. right? And so like a lot of women, I heard someone a pastor talk about this. I'm going to be bastardizing it a little bit. But they want, we just want men to share their feelings. No, no, no. What you want is for them to share your feelings. Yeah. Meaning they want you to feel the same way that they do about something. They want you to be sad when they're sad. They want you to be happy when they're happy. But if you really want a man to shine in the relationship with you, to all the ladies listening to this, let him be a man. Encourage him to be a man. If he wants to go out with his buddies and, you know, hang out or go train jujitsu or go shoot or do something like that, don't be the woman that says, oh, didn't you do that last month? Like, are you really going to hang out with your friends again? Be be the, the gal that literally lifts him up and supports the things that he can do because you can't imagine what that's going to do for a man whenever he knows that you are confident in their relation and you're confident in his masculinity. I want to revisit that uh, in a little while when we got more time to develop it. Um, I, I, that story, though, what you were just saying, reminds me of a story of this gal. She wanted her, her husband to go to church with her. And yeah. he's just like, nah, I mean, that's my golf day. It's my golf day. It's my golf day. It's my golf day. And like she, so finally she was like, instead of badgering him, what she did is she started getting up on Sunday mornings and like shining his golf shoes, mm. cleaning his yep. clubs. It's like just as a way, said, I'm going to serve him. This is what he wants to do. This is what I'm going to do. Right. And all of a sudden, it just kind of, she saw a transformation. And one day he's like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to play golf today. I think I'm going to go with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and people say, oh, I can't believe she would she would subject herself right. to Lower that. Lower herself oh, to do God. that. Oh, my God. No, that's, that's, that's Christ washing your feet, right? Because yeah. uh, a lot of people say, you know, they said to Jesus, what do you mean? You're touching their feet. You're, you know, you're letting this 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 prostitute, you know, right. break perfume over your feet and touch you. You're allowing this, you know, you're whatever you're lessening yourself but you're not yeah you're not because the servant among you is going to be the greatest right mm-hmm. and so it's a powerful thing man it really Absolutely. is in that deal if people got that if people truly got that and understood it relationships in america or, or, or in the world really would be revolution revolutionized i mean one thing in relationships that could change relationships for a lot of people is relationships are not 50 50 they're 100 100 both ways yeah. and so because the thing is, is if you think of something as 50 50 it could very easily become 51 49 60, 40, 70, 30, and then you feel like you're, you're owed something. Exactly. You feel like yeah. you're owed something because didn't I just shine up his clubs for three weeks in a row? He didn't take out the trash. Why didn't he do that? Yeah. Or the opposite side is like, she doesn't appreciate me. I bring home you know, the money so that we can do all these fine things. She doesn't appreciate me. You're thinking 50-50, brother. Yeah. Think 100-100. Worry about giving your 100 before you worry right. about how much she's putting in. How men view and relate to the world. We're going to solve the world's mystery with that in the next segment. Um, and I'm excited to do it because this is one of my favorite topics, right? I listen, anyway, I listen to the, I listen to your show, Ryan Mickler. I listen to his Order of Man show. I listen to, you know, Andy Frisella. These guys come from all these different angles. I consider those guys friends and they're all crazy. 
but they all share something that's like it's revolutionary for men so i'm gonna i'm gonna show we're gonna show you folks how men view the world in a minute all right uh after the break but before that friends if you are worried about the future i'm a little bit worried about the future look i don't blame you but don't get caught unprepared for what's ahead uh if that happens you only blame yourself so go to my special website preparewithchad.com you will be able to save $150 on a three-month emergency food kit from my friends over at My Patriot Supply. This is not bunker food. It's actually delicious. You could eat it right now and enjoy it tremendously. A uh, wide variety of meals. Uh, it's enough to last three full months per person. These meals are going to provide 2,000 calories a day. You're going to have that strength energy to get through what's coming. It stays fresh for up to 25 years if you store it right and if uh, it's there when you need it. Do not face the future with the prospect of not having anything to eat. Go to preparewithchad.com. Do it now claim that 150 dollars savings per kit it's going to ship fast it's going to ship free it's going to arrive in discreet unmarked boxes for privacy prepare with chad.com what did i say go to prepare with chad.com we'll be right back you know i i think men aren't that complex in a lot of ways um we it's but it's oversimplifying to say that we're simple okay there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on but let's let's break it down like i i think and i want your opinion on this correct me where i'm wrong here i think men relate to i think they find their sense of identity and their worth in how they relate to their woman and how they relate to their work Mm -hmm. one of those two things gets messed up you got a messed up dude, right? How he relates to the opposite sex, how he relates to uh, the, that which, because he because men by nature are providers. They really are. They, they want to provide. They want to come home and they want to make sure that, they, that they're taking care of that which has been entrusted to them. They feel like they're good stewards, whether that is their wife and kids, their home, uh, those things which make them feel secure. And I, the biggest issues that I see with men is when they can't provide. Suddenly they just don't feel like they've got a purpose in life anymore, right? And now we're seeing this big battle against men of being that strong provider. Uh, and it, it's it, we're taking away a huge thing that I think gives them a sense of self-worth. What do you think? It goes back to the garden. I mean, in the garden, you're, you, we were put there to work and keep it. And then Adam was given Eve. And, you know, there was that loving relationship that, you know, was fractured by sin. And the thing for most men, you see this with you know, incels, involuntary celibates, or these people that, you know, are in their thirties and forties, and maybe they're having trouble finding a woman and yet they're, they're playing video games and, you know, hanging out in chat rooms and not really doing anything to try yeah. and meet a woman or something like that. But there is a unique thing that happens to a man when he feels like he's not hitting the mark in terms of provision. And so at different points in my career, before I started doing the whole podcast thing, like there were points when I was crushing it, killing it, couldn't have been better, got a little cocky. Right. And then on the other side where I wasn't crushing it, wasn't killing it, wasn't being the best provider I could have been, couldn't have felt worse right about it and it's because we have that internal thing written on us that we are to provide for our family and it's Mm. sinful if we don't do so and so i understand why a lot of men feel that way but a lot of men they like to wallow in in that that muck in that that feeling and they don't let it propel them i think shame chad has gotten such a bad rap i think shame is one of the best motivators possible and every single psychologist on the planet is going to call me crazy and stupid and bigoted and whatever and that's fine but the reason why I'm in shape, the reason why I do the things I'm supposed to do on a daily basis is because the shame of when I don't do it and that mm-hmm. feeling or the shame of being the man I used to be when I wasn't someone that checked all those boxes, you know what I mean? And so for a man, if you feel ashamed that you're not providing in a way that you feel is necessary for your family, you need to fix it. But, but make sure you're not just playing the comparison game. Right. Oh, my buddy just got a, bi- a bigger, nicer truck than mine. So I need to work harder so I can do that. That's not providing for your family, brother right? Part of your provision for your family is making sure that you work in a way that provides enough time to where you can invest in your marriage first and invest in your kids second. And then the whole family tree ends up, you know, being benefited by that. But it's a complicated issue for a lot of men, but a lot of it does boil down to, are you able to produce? Are you able to help out? Yeah. And like, I think there'll be work in heaven, right? Yeah. Right. I, but, but see, see, people think, oh, well, work, I got to go to work. Oh, it's so horrible. W- you go back to the garden work was not part of the curse the the, the, 
the command to work was to to subdue and to dominate that was there before the curse he said this i want you to you know subdue this i want you to tend this garden i want you to work this have dominion the curse was the ground was now going to be contrary now you're toiling Right. Yeah, exactly. By the sweat of your brow. Now there's going to be roots and hard ground. And, you know, imagine if you could go out and work and create and build without any of the adversity that comes mm-hmm. with that, the stress that comes from doing all that. Just the amazing creative ability. Everybody would want a piece of that, right? right? So I think that when we bring things into a, a kingdom order, which was by God's design, and we begin to to build and, and, and thereby provide according to that there's something amazingly fulfilling in that sitting around playing a video game is not fulfilling no uh, it, it may be fun and you may fall into that lazy trap uh it's sitting around wallowing in self-pity and i understand and i am an advocate for this i know men deal with depression they deal with the chemical imbalances but i truly believe that those chemical imbalances a lot of times will begin to mend and heal themselves if you get your things back get yourself straight right. get back in order there's so much there's so much data now about people like, hey, before we put you on an SSRI and change the chemical balance of your brain, have you tried vigorous exercise? Mm -hmm. But we don't have doctors that are writing a prescription in illegible handwriting for 30 days of exercise and clean eating. You know what (laughs) I mean? But it's like, let's see how you feel 30 days of getting after it, sweating profusely and eating stuff that was actually like from nature and not from a factory, right? Eating real food. And so like, but we live in this culture where everything is the easy button. So if I got the sads, I need the easy button. That's usually a pill or that's a new video game or something like that to kind of give us that mental masturbation of, oh, I got to the next level. I did the next thing. But you know the thing, whenever you accomplish something where there's not a whole lot of resistance, how good you feel. Like if you're writing a song or a joke or a monologue or something like that and you just nail it the first time, that level of satisfaction is so incredible because God spoke to you in a way that allowed you to basically clear the decks and work right towards the goal that you wanted to get to. Guys, you can have that too. But a lot of guys are just way too lazy because in our culture, we spend a lot of time getting ready to do stuff. Yeah. So you know you're out of shape. You you know things aren't going well for your body. So you spend a lot of time reading blogs about running. You spend a lot of time thinking about running. You spend a lot of time shopping for the right shoes and the right pants and the right this and that for running. But what you don't do is when your alarm clock goes off at five o'clock in the morning, it's throw on your running shoes and get the pavement. So we get ready to get ready and then we don't actually make it happen. Start scrolling through people's before and after pictures. Oh man. And you're like, wow, that is motivating. You know what's funny about the before and after pictures though is what about the people that just stayed in shape from high school? Like, we don't ever compliment those people. It's always like, oh, my God, that's so great. You lost 100 pounds and you're so good. And then we don't talk about those people again when they put half the weight back on or all the way back on or something yeah. like that. We should be valuing the people that do it on a, a the grind every single day to make sure that they are honoring their bodies that God gave them. See, I that brings up a controversial point. I'm not going to put you on the spot with this, but you take last week. They had the Sports Illustrated thing that came out with yeah. the, the obese girl. That's not a healthy lifestyle. No, it's not a healthy person. That's not something to emulate or to go after or to chase, uh, especially on something that you know holds up sports and the athletic form as as a you know as something to be pursued. Um, I think that this whole fat shaming thing is like, oh, you can't call somebody out for being... No, I think that that's an excuse for, let's say, women who know that they're never going to work as hard as some of these models do or these athletes do. And so they're excited to see somebody like them. Mm -hmm. So rather than put in the work, whether it's male or female, instead of you putting in the work and saying, hey, I'm going to be better. No, I'm glad now that people are out there putting them on magazines that represent my lifestyle too, because that gives me an excuse to stay in that lazy level. But what what is the aspirational identity? Like for that for right. that lady that I think was uh, taken advantage of and putting out there to say like, hey, this is what beauty is. That's not the picture of health. That's not the picture of beauty. And then if you said that she wasn't beautiful, you were the biggest. So it was like bait. It was like red meat sure base for, for those types of things. It's a no-win situation. Right, absolutely. But the, the thing about it is that people have to realize is we all have aspirational identities, but very few of us are willing to work hard to get there. There are a lot of people that want to be stand-ups, right? They want to be comics. Sure. But they don't want to go like, you know, eat you know what on stage in front of a bunch of strangers they don't want to do that right they just want to be in front of the arenas they want they want to be you know doing the things at the casinos they want to they want to have all the notoriety yeah. but they don't want to do the process of getting there and so when you put up these people as paragons of virtue which is what you're doing when you're featuring them on basically a body issue of a sports magazine you're saying that hey this is what health looks like and you're not doing those people any favors it's kind of what you and i were talking about you know backstage before all this it's like you're not loving somebody by telling them that their delusion is positive and accurate exactly right and at the end of the day it's like she needs help 
There are people with bad genetics that have bad bodies, but for all the people that have bad genetics coupled with some sort of a thyroid issue, there are 10,000 people that eat too much and move too little. And so like, I know that that seems like we're shaming these people, but again, it's like, I want you to be healthy. I don't want you to get winded when you get to the top of a staircase. I'm not going to tell you what you're doing to yourself is positive because it's not. The loving thing to do for you right now is to tell you, hey, you should probably counteract some of the bad decisions you're making for your body because you may not be able to recover. You are so toxic. I know. You, it's just like oozing out of me at the moment. It's ridiculous. I know. How it's toxic terrible. you are as a man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, Chad. <laughs> but nobody can prove you wrong. So, you know, it, it's like I said to John Doyle the other day. I said, you're so full of hate. He goes, hey, but am I? It felt good to say it. So I didn't, <laughs> right. feel, like, didn't feel real hateful. Uh, there's there's that huge element of truth that's built into that thing. It, it, that's what we've got to do, man. I, I spoke at an event last night, big big group of people a lot of different folks represented and i i talked for a while i i just kind of evolved it into the fact that there is an attack on men you want to mm -hmm. change the political process you want to change the culture we're living in change the political process you know we, we keep putting weak men in places of power we got to quit doing that people who are willing to be puppets yep. people that are willing to bow down to the power brokers people that are willing and allow themselves to to be bought out you know that's why they hated me when i was running for office so many of them they spoke out they were like oh he's not he's not uh, political enough he's not a politic you know he's not polished yeah. he says these things that are offensive oh my god you know i can't believe he he posted this or said that and you know i, I can't believe that anybody would ever vote for him you know texas could have had that guy who said that like yeah that's exactly right and i don't apologize for any of it well here's the deal weak men create hard times right hard times create you know or you know <laughs> We can create hard times. Strong yeah, men, like, strong men create weak or, or easy times, and easy times create weak right. men. Right, messed up the poem. Sorry to have yeah. wrote it, but like that's the reality. Is right now we're in this continuum where we have these weak men creating hard times, and something's going to happen. Right, I don't, I don't have any foreknowledge of this or anything, but something's going to happen, and then we're going to look around for the sheepdogs, and we're going to realize that there's not very many. There, there's not as many that we would want to be around to protect us because we've been outsourcing our fitness. We've been outsourcing our protection. We've been outsourcing our thinking to all these other different entities. And so when hard times come again, where will the strong men be? Yeah. And so that's one thing that we try to do to equip people, you know, with the ministry that we do or with the stuff we do with Undaunted Life is look, no one's going to be there for you when the time comes except for you. Yeah. Right. And if God has something that he's calling upon your life that requires you to be physically ready and able, there's not going to be time to train. You just need to go. And a lot of people just aren't ready to go and to get after it. And as a culture, again, the only reason we can have these conversations right now, Chad, is because a lot of strong men made good times. Yeah. Right. And that's the only way we're able to sit here and debate these ridiculous topics is because we're in such an area where we're not worried about somebody charging into our community and taking all of our women and horses. Right. We're all very, very comfortable. And unfortunately, we're living in an age where they're trying to cancel those strong voices. Um, more to come. Hey, in Joe Biden's America, criminals are exalted. The police are condemned. It's sad to say, but you need to be prepared and properly trained to defend yourself and your family. Sort of like what we're talking about. iTarget Pro is what I recommend. Revolutionary system allows you to dry fire practice with your actual firearm anytime in the safety and privacy of your own home. You don't have to go to the range. You don't have to buy expensive ammunition. Uh, you'll save a ton of money. Download iTarget's proprietary app. Load the laser bullet into your firearm. I just love that they got a laser bullet. Let's get it. Quite honestly. Uh, start your training experience right there in your home. iTarget will help you develop muscle memory, sharpen target reaction speed, sight alignment, trigger function, a whole lot more. iTarget Pro comes in the major calibers that you own, including 223, so you can stay sharp with almost any firearm. Go to iTargetPro.com, save 10%, plus get free shipping with offer code CHAD. I spell it Chad. Makes a great gift for Father's Day. It's less expensive than a few hours at the range. The letter I targetpro.com offer code chad be right back oh yeah welcome back folks it is time for me to wax eloquent or something like that folks you know that if walt disney was actually dead and not frozen in a chamber somewhere awaiting the cure to cancer he'd be spinning in his grave so fast he probably set the coffin on fire. Disney has erupted into a bastion of woke nonsense over the past few decades, and the process only accelerated in recent years. We've been talking about it. I'm pleased to come before you today 
It let you know that they're all better now. That's right. In a recent report from Variety, it was revealed that Disney Plus won't be accepting ads for alcohol or politics. Now, I know that it's not very fair of me to tell you something like that and then interrupt the beginning of the ticker tape parade you were no doubt organizing to tell you who cares? The logic is clear, of course. Disney, you know, it just it just slipped its toe out even further into the crazy pool than usual recently, particularly in Florida, and they got it stomped on by an elephant. Uh, so now they're licking their wounds, but also trying to signal to all the people who dropped their subscriptions in the past few months. Uh, they're trying to make up for it. It's a real baby comeback. You know, that anyway, I went into my 80s yak rot right baby come back uh it really shouldn't work folks uh first of all when i say who cares i mean this why would they be running ads for alcohol and or politics on a family-friendly streaming service in the first place what should we congratulate them now because they don't have strippers dancing the pole between shows actually i'd probably be more likely to subscribe if they did chris maybe we should add that to the show i don't know uh anyway the other thing is that we shouldn't fall for this you know, chastened Disney front because that's what it is. When you have most of the same people who were in charge of creating content now as you had before, you haven't changed anything. You're just taking a break from being open about your agenda and you're throwing out token gestures at the public to try to stop the bleeding. Now, I might have some mixed metaphors there, but you get the idea. Disney at this point would basically have to start completely over and rebuild from the ground up for the more conservative minded among us to be able to even think about trusting them ever again. And in the meantime, I couldn't care less that they're not going to run ads about alcohol or politics i just want you to do better disney do so much better and maybe then we'll talk but still probably not have you been keeping up with this disney thing this nonsense that's out there the leaked stuff where they're wanting at least 50 percent of their characters to be lgbtq and all this right. kind of stuff because the cartoons have to be gay i love that they're mad that people heard about it that it's like <laughs> hey we're mad you're paying attention but it is token gestures that's all it is yeah. at this point because they're seeing their bottom line and they're seeing other entities pop up and say hey we'll make kids content for you or hey come over here we have already had this content for so long it's just being like pressed out by all the disney stuff but i think this is a great opportunity to talk about how conservatives finally are pushing back because yeah. what it used to be is conservatives would get pushed on and pushed on and pushed on and they're like okay i'm going to be nice i'm going to be happy i'm going to be whatever and then finally they would get to their limit and say hey this is as far as you're going to be able to push and that's fine right mm -hmm. but conservatives have gotten so nice and so polite the problem is is one day they're going to wake up <clears throat> the war is over and they're going to realize they never even put on their helmet or grab their sword for the battle right? right and so with conservatives going on the offense now you can be bombastic and you can be rude but at the same time what is going to be better than pushing back on these entities that are trying to put stuff into your kids brains because they know you're not paying attention mm -hmm. like one of the best things that could have possibly happened with covid is that parents got to hear what their students were hearing from their teachers they got to actually look at some of the assignments and they were paying attention more to what was showing up on their screens or up on their televisions when they're watching all these entertainment things because once you introduce these things into a kid's brain it's a contagion it grows and so i'm so glad that disney showed us their cards and i'm glad it made them mad that now they're so angry that we're paying attention but it's like yeah we're paying attention and we're going to hold you to account and guess what i'm not going to trust you blindly ever again yeah no and it's amazing when you start seeing that stock dropping and yeah and and their bottom line starts to drop and uh, you know and then you see like what's happening over at twitter and, and you know um pretty interesting you know they had that leaked video where they you know the guy over do we have that video yeah, let's let's do um which one do you want to do because they're both do one do do clip one the rest of us who have been here believe in something that's good for the planet and not just to people free speech because again like these people really do believe in what we're doing these are the policies we've put in place for misinformation or mislabeling media or whatever yeah why do you think this should be taken down yeah like those are the questions they're gonna ask him yeah 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 and it's gonna be hard for him to be like oh because people should make their own decision it's like no but people don't know how to make a rational decision if you don't put out correct things that are supposed to be out in the public. He has Asperger's. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So he's special. Your special needs, you're literally special needs. <laughs> so, I can't even take what you're saying seriously. 
So there's a client partner with Twitter who's getting caught on Project Veritas hidden camera talking about people shouldn't be trusted with free speech. Then he goes off and talks about Elon Musk with his Asperger's. It says literally special needs. Uh, that's been a dumpster fire going on. But I mean, again, we, we're seeing that, but it's not anything we didn't already know, right? It's like the Disney thing. Yeah. Now it's Twitter. They, they, they're playing us for fools, every one of them. Every last one of them are playing us for fools. And in addition to that, they never thought that they would have to come off of their elitist perch yeah. to mingle with the commoners, as it were, because they didn't obviously Good know. Point. I mean, long live Project Veritas. They didn't know they were being recorded. But again, that guy is not mad that people don't like his opinion. They're mad that his opinion got out there. Yeah. But it, again, it goes back to conspiracies. I think we talked about it on, on the last show. Like, it's always a conspiracy theory until we find the evidence that it was true the entire time. And so look at Netflix. Netflix is pushing back a little bit, but this might just be a little bit of virtue signaling from them saying, hey, if you don't like the content of your show or if it offends you, you shouldn't work here anymore. But I don't believe that for a second. Right. I don't believe Netflix is actually going to be getting rid of their woke employees. But the, again, it takes the other silent majority of these conservatives that don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. It's like, look, if there's a few few dozen purple head you know pierced nose weirdos that work at your place that are controlling all the content that's going out how about you and your several hundred other buddies go to management and say hey we're not down with this we don't want to put this type of content out there please don't listen to those loud voices if they want to get mad and create their own company let them create their own and that's why i love and of course he's referring to the netflix uh, memo that went out last week where they told their employees they said look you know guys like dave Chappelle, we're not going to cancel them we're going to keep continue playing them if you yep. don't like it you find another place to work are they going to are there any teeth in that bite i doubt it um it so you know you'll see it happen it'll just it's like everything else everything from crt to stuff in the schools they just repackage it and pull their agenda back out right yep. and it's it's the same dude in the lineup he's just wearing another person's jersey that's right you know um good stuff man good points ah, anyway uh basically culturally we're just gonna have to tune out I, but you know what i was gonna say and i gotta go to this break but I, I'm getting more and more creators who are sending me messages like on Twitter. They're, they're designers, they're animators, mm -hmm. they're, you know, we've got our buddy Eric July who's on the show. He's creating a whole new comic book right. uh, company. You know, we've got to do more of this. Got to do more of this. But um, anyway, now that DHS has created a department designed to combat disinformation, one has to wonder what's next. Free speech is under attack, which is why I'm proud to support Patriot Mobile. They're the only Christian conservative cell phone provider out there, and they are passionate about free speech, your constitutional rights. They offer the same nationwide coverage as the major carriers. So you're going to get the same service plus peace of mind that your money is combating the left's attempt to silence you. Patriot Mobile has plans to fit any budget, and their 100% U.S.-based customer support team provides exceptional customer service. They share your values. They support organizations fighting for religious freedom, constitutional rights, sanctity of life. They support our veterans and first responder heroes. Go to patriotmobile.com slash chad, or you can call 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation when you use offer code CHAD. You know how I spell it, Chad. Veterans and first responders are going to save even more, so make the switch today. It is time that we support companies that love America, love you, and share your values. Go to patriotmobile.com slash chat or call them up. Tell them I sent you 972 Patriot right back. You know what we got to do? What's that? Tequila. Right now? Tequila right Let's now. We just might as well do it again. Cheers. Chad. Another one right there in the special skulls. Mm. Might as well finish it. Boy, it reminds you that men have nipples. <laughs> Woo! Make the hair stand up on you, boy. It's good for you. It's good stuff. Ha! How many times a week are you working out? Every day? Pretty much every day. Doing like, something? If I go two days in a row without doing anything, it becomes a problem. So. Yeah. I found that, and I'm 49 years old. I, I, you know, I go through my phases of life where I'm active, and then I'm not, and then I get lazy. I hit the easy button, like you say. I'm the world's worst. I've got great genetics. Um, you know, I have broad shoulders. I, I mean, I'm built to be built right, and I'm I'm my own worst enemy in that regard. Well, I think my, the best thing that could have ever happened to me is I was not blessed with great genetics, mm -hmm. and so like I was really overweight when I was younger and those types of things, but it just became a habit to where like some people, if they work out two days in a row, their entire world goes to crap. It's the exact opposite for me, but it's like just doing something every day. You don't have to power lift every day. You don't have to do jujitsu every day. You don't have to run sprints every single day, but that should be part of what you're doing, and like I don't care what physical hobby you're into, but like work towards your hobby. So if you're yeah. going to be the beer league softball guy, make sure you're legging out you know, doubles. Make sure that 
that you're chasing balls down, run to your position, do whatever. Like for me, everything extra. I do kind of centers around jujitsu. It's like, I'm not going to try to, you know, add a hundred pounds to my deadlift because that's not going to help me finish a double leg, but it's just, you know, find something that really gets you going. Don't find someone else's hobby. Cause like right. you watch Cam Haynes run and you're like, I'm going to run marathons. But maybe you're not built for that. Go find something to do. Just do it. And I've had to give myself permission to, I don't have to go, you know, as an athlete younger, I, I didn't I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I just do something and little things like park way out in the parking lot, walk in, right. you know, but, but you know, I, now I'll go out and I'll walk three miles a day. Right. And it's like, you're like, well, I'm not running. I'm not beating myself up over that at mm-hmm. 49. Right. And, and they're just little things that I'm like, just, you know, if, if I can go into the gym and let's just go do bench press, do a little cardio, maybe you still did something. Well, make things a little bit harder too. So, yeah. like you know, shout out to to Go Ruck and Jason McCarthy, that company right. out there. Like, go on a three mile ruck, ruck. Yeah. Like, throw a thirty pound. Well, pack that's me. On your that's back. what I'll do. I'll wear the weighted. Vest. See, there you go. And so yeah. it's like the walk is fine. But also, whenever you add that weight, you're adding extra resistance. It's going to be yeah. two, three times better for you. You're going to burn more calories. And again, if you only eat junk. The problem is, is like if you only eat junk and then you also don't work out, it becomes a terrible cycle. But yeah. typically when you're really, really active, you're not going to eat and drink like crap the night before because you know that alarm clock's going to be hitting in the morning. You got to get up and be ready to go. Yeah. You can't be over there barfing or doing something else. Like you re- got to really get after it. So it affects all the other things in your life. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage out. Speaking of garbage, I think Chris has a TikTok. Here we go. Let's do it. Sometimes people get mad when they find out that my students know that I'm gay, but this year it happened because they asked me if Ryan Reynolds or Pete Davidson is hotter. I really just can't fake my way through that. What? <laughs> Why do they always look like that? They like, always look like that. that. They, they always look exactly like that. They always look like that. We, no, no, I'm good. I, normally I know if it's a male or a female real quick, and I'm thinking that was a male. That was, I, think that was a, I think that was a chick. Is it a female? Yeah. yeah, yeah Trans yeah. or gay? Lesbian. Dyke. Just, just yes. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Got a real Justin Bieber thing going. Bit, yeah. Got a real Justin Bieber thing going on there. Yes, uh, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it, again, it's the teachers, dude. TikTok is just nonstop. These teachers jumping on here talking about talking about their students about their sexuality why are they so desperate to have that conversation with they their can't kids? have and they kids always themselves bring it up like, that's the thing they oh, gotta do your kids ask me because you know what i didn't know about my teachers growing up everything i anything. didn't know i didn't know anything about my teachers the only reason i knew some of my teachers were married was because their spouse worked at the school as a teacher as well right like it's right so it's like i didn't know what their hobbies were i didn't know what they liked to do for fun right. i knew that they required me to work hard in order to get a's on tests and homework in order for me to get an a in the class so i didn't get yeah. grounded you know what i mean i had an english teacher in high school who we assumed he was gay we didn't know right and you didn't, didn't ask us him. yeah we didn't talk about it Now, as we became adults, we learned, Right. but then we weren't thinking about it. We didn't care. I was trying to figure out how to pass a note across class. I wasn't worried about the teacher's sexuality, you know? I was worried... 16 years old, I was worried about my own sexuality. Right. When I know we're, we're talking about this in jest, but at the same time, it's like, I remember the creepy coach teacher in my high school, <laughs> and everybody kind of knew, like, don't let your girlfriend be in his class, that type of thing. And then a few years after I graduated, lo and behold, he had been banging one of the students, right? Wow. And this is, he's married with kids and the whole thing. So I know that kind of took like a serious turn, but like, these th- th- this is why parents are so concerned because when you have these conversations that is what a groomer would do yeah. they're giving you a little bit of something to see how you react so that when you push to that level next time you're not even going to notice so you push a little bit further and so no nobody is saying that all teachers are groomers obviously sure. but what is the benefit to that child's k-12 through education by talking to them about their junk or about how they feel that way in terms of their gender because you put that stereotype into a kid you put that you know contagion into their brain and and then you hear these teachers talk about how they hear kids in the in the hallway say, hey, have you picked yet? Well, what do you mean? Have you picked your gender yet? Because wow. when you're seven years old, like I could convince a seven-year-old they're Batman if you give me enough time with them. Yeah. But when you put that contagion in their brain, we should absolutely be pushing back. You're not going to do that to our kids. There it is. Hang tight. We'll be right back.
Hey, just a couple seconds left. I want to say thank you to Kyle Thompson for coming on. Make sure that you thank him as well by going and subscribing to his podcast, listening and supporting An Undaunted Life, a man's podcast. Make sure that you are checking it out. Thanks for coming on the show. Two Appreciate days in a row, me. brother. We're going to do this thing row. again. We're going to go eat some barbecue. Watchchad.com is where all the fun stuff is. Come find me at a live show. Going to be all over Texas. And of course, going to be in Oklahoma as well in the month of June. You don't want to miss it. Go to watchchad.com and check it out. Don't forget, subscribe to Overtime, blazetv.com slash chat. Say when you use promo code CHAD. I hope everybody has a great evening and a great week. We love you. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.